Let us begin, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, Despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. Name the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to introduce for our first reflection the reasonings for our preparation. And Sister Anne was a Carmelite sister for 33 years, temporarily went into salt and to, for active ministry to see what the world will be like after 33 years in the cloister. And then she, as the Lord has touched her heart to found a new order. And so she is in that discernment process. But because of that process, I got to get to know her. And she is a great inspiration to me and a, kind of is the, uh, how should I say, the driving motivation for this consecration to our Blessed Mother. So I want to thank Sister publicly for her contribution and her love and her passion for our Blessed Mother and for family consecration. This sister, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yes, thank you, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Our Lady is surely smiling at each one of you for coming tonight. The reflections we'll be offering are the fruit of a Tuesday night Marian prayer group, which has been meeting for almost four years. A friend would invite a friend, and now the group straddles several parishes. They meet informally in homes to talk about Mary's messages and to pray a rosary together. But what happens when you listen to Mary's heart? You catch fire. So now these women are feeling the responsibility that Jesus spoke about. To whomever much is given, much will be required. Truly I came to cast fire upon the earth and would that it were already enkindled. During my sojourn among my family here in Wichita, coming out of the cloister, it's been a great joy for me to become associated with this prayer group. Many have asked us if these Tuesday talks are going to follow de Montfort's method or Father Gately's 33 days of morning glory. St. Louis de Montfort was a prophet, a giant among saints, standing almost alone against the Jansenism of his day. No saint on record was expelled by so many bishops, except for Melanie of La Salette, but her name is only recently being cleared of slander, so her cause for sainthood is not far underway. St. Louis was poisoned by his enemies and died at the age of 43 in 1716. His mission had been to Western France. The rural people were despised by the educated, they were lucky if a priest would condescend to ride a circuit from time to time and offer mass in their poor parishes. Who was caring for their souls and catechizing them? Not many could read, but they knew they were Catholic and they knew how to work hard. Mary loved them and sent them her great servant to draw them closely to her heart. They consecrated themselves to Mary as Father de Montfort taught them. Their families became very fervent for generations. It was their children and grandchildren who stood firm against the atheistic and Masonic French Revolution. The revolutionaries were armed with guns and swords, but they greatly feared these brave farmers carrying farm implements. I was privileged to visit the graves of some of these martyrs last summer, whom St. John Paul canonized. Thanks to these rural Catholics who were all Marys, the French government was forced to grant rights to the Catholic Church and schools. As a nun, I read all of de Montfort's works. It was an exercise in frustration. All I saw was the chains, the litanies, the hymns, the long prayers, and the long list of reasons as to why Mary was worthy of our veneration. Yes, yes but I wanted to know how to live a Marian life. He was teaching people how to serve Mary. Nobody could live such a seriously ascetic, self-sacrificing life as Father de Montfort, unless he had a profound union with Mary. I wanted that union, but I felt more inspired by de Montfort's life than his Mariology. Then one day, 
I found in the library a slender booklet tucked between two large books. It was by a Carmelite priest I had never heard of, Venerable Michael of St. Augustine. His short treatise was the most radical, most profound defense I had ever read of what he called life in, with, and for Mary. Another Carmelite priest, writing three centuries later, wrote the introduction to Father Michael's book and made the case for something amazing about St. de Montfort. Venerable Michael's treatise had been published two years before Louis was born. Louis had a priest uncle in the city of Rennes, so Louis attended college and seminary there. The Carmelite priests of that city were zealous apostles of Father Michael's writings. Witnesses say that young Louis would stop and make a visit at their Carmel on his way to and from the college every day. He would kneel before a statue of Mary, profoundly recollected. Louis later confided to a friend that it was before that statue that he received the call to the priesthood. It's possible to take extracts from the works of Venerable Michael and St. de Montfort and put them side by side in columns. Surely Louis heard Mass at that Carmel and listened to homilies, or he chose those fathers for his confessors or retreat masters. The influence is too much to be sheer coincidence. Father de Montfort wrote far more texts than Father Michael wrote. De Montfort is systematic, orderly, logical. His focus was on how to live a Marian ascetical life, how to work for Mary as her apostle and slave. Father Michael's focus, on the other hand, was on how to live a Marian mystical life, to live intimately in Mary's presence as a close friend, as one who shares her joys and sorrows and actually enters into her prayers and desires. Here's a paragraph from the Carmelite. When the faculties of the soul are so nobly and perfectly engaged in the remembrance, the knowledge, and the love of God and of Mary in God, there follows such a deep and firm adherence of the whole soul to God and Mary that through an inflow of love into the soul, the soul seems to become one with God and Mary as though God, Mary, and the soul have blended into one. This state, he says, seems to be the last and the highest that a soul can reach in the Marian life." End quote. Father de Montfort was living that deep, mystical Marian life, but he was writing for illiterate Catholics. He set words to popular songs. He enacted plays. He handed out chains and crosses. He built outdoor Calvary scenes. He was focusing on the practical, rushing from town to town. He only had time to plant seeds that he trusted Mary would develop gradually in the souls of those semi-ignorant but good families. Three centuries later, Father Michael Gately is writing about Mary for educated Catholics who can develop their own prayer regime to fit their modern careers. What Father Gately offers is a daily meditation for each of the 33 days based on profound insights of modern saints. Please take advantage of all those jewels. Our ladies are going to offer you other jewels. 